Hey there guys, welcome back. This is part two of a German house versus an Australian house. The difference in the building styles and the building materials and how everything is done. And so in the first part, we had a look at the first basis of the house, which is um, putting down the slab or as they call it in Germany, the base plate. So I would imagine after five days that would have dried. If you like this series, please like and subscribe. If you're a builder in Germany, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, you know, if you're a tradesman and what, why you do the things that you do, the way that you do it. I'm sure that there's differences in the environment and that, that need to be um, thought about, building codes. There's a whole heap of things that can go into a building. So let's continue on with part two. And this time I think we're doing our masonry, our bricklaying. The floor slab has hardened and the bricks are already there. Now it can start with the masonry. The first step, lay bitumen membrane. It protects the walls from rising damp. For the first row of bricks, a cement mortar has to Okay, so that's the first thing that's different, particularly from where I'm from in Australia, but they, they do use like a, a damp, uh, rising damp, dampeners in colder places, wetter places in Australia. But yeah, just straight off the bat, you can tell immediately that these people are worried about rising damp. So there must be a lot of water in the soil or the soil, the water levels really close to the topsoil. ...to be mixed, which later becomes as hard as concrete. It serves as an underfill to compensate for differences in height of the base plate, because the stones must all be at exactly the same level. It starts at the corners. A laser checks whether the height is correct. If the first stone sits and is exactly in balance, the next ones are aligned with it. In the other corners it happens the same way. Alright, so there's some pretty funky bricks they've got there. I don't know how wide they are, they must be about 200, 250? 250 wide by they're almost blocks they're almost 250 by 250 there could be 300 by 300 so there's some decent decent bricks there i don't think they'd be too heavy because most of them are cavity but it looks like they're filling in the cavities as well so there must be some sort of insulation uh, property to these bricks um also the 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 corner corner brick is a different different shape so I, I wonder is this is this eventually going to be rendered maybe I would imagine rendered so that might be like a capping capping end on the render but yeah decent bricks of course all dimensions for wall openings for example for windows and doors must also be observed the masons have the floor plan for this. Here on the south side of the house there is already the first special feature, three floor to ceiling windows. The row of bricks must therefore be interrupted here, just like on the front for the front door. The first row is slowly taking shape. The masons work their way from the corners and put stone by stone. But what kind of stone is that exactly, which is installed here? Alright, so that guy just shocked me then. <laughs> I was just looking at that and he's hitting his level. But I can just see, that. okay, so he's got a broken level that he's hitting and then he's got his good level on the other side. So yeah, you would never ever hit your level, ever. Because you can um, uncalibrate it, knock, it, knock the bubble out, you can do all sorts of stuff, put air bubbles into the air bubble water bubbles and then so yeah that really shocked me at first but yeah he's just he's got an old level that he's, he's hitting as a like a uh, straight edge and then he's looking at his good level but yeah you, you get shot if you did that in australia we do not work with the external wall insulation system it's integrated in the stone with hydrophobic mineral wool so a solid stone, 36.5 centimeters thick, with hydrophobic mineral wool is in... So yeah, I said 300, but bigger, 350, that's a big block. 
and that and if they've got this mineral wall so basically the, the block is coming already with insulation in there that's a great idea yeah that's really clever insulation that means best sound insulation and best building physical properties and also the best thermal insulation and are already on the second row so-called thin bed mortar now ensures the non-positive connection between the rows of stones ideal for energy that is really thin okay that's just like glue isn't it that's that's not a thick uh, thick layer at all yeah that is interesting the efficient building high load capacity with a very small joint thickness of approximately one millimeter all right so again so he's he's buttering some bricks but he's not buttering so he's buttering that connecting brick so maybe that's what those grooves are so the first so your corner <coughs> cornerstone has a groove in it that's connected and he's buttered that one but then the next one he didn't butter one millimeter so there's no butter on that that's just so that must be just sliding the second the row is quickly laid a barrier film against rising damp comes over it again the two low okay so they're they're going out of their way about rising damp here so this is obviously a big problem that they're trying to avoid so that's two membranes they're putting in now So I wonder if they just cut that off or is that... So there's a membrane that goes down. So the, the one they put down was about 400, 500 on the, on the slab. Now they've got a 350 that's going over the top of the bricks. But I'm really surprised about how thin this, the mortar is. That's really thin. And I don't, I see how on the corners, the, they've butted the bricks on the corners, but all the other ones are just interlocking. Whereas every brick in Australia would be butted. Yeah. But yeah, you can see the effort that they're going in to stop water. So this must be a big problem. Lower rows of stones form the base of the house, which will later be clad. The walls are now protruding over the base. The masons are making good progress thanks to the large-scale bricks. But instead of laying row after row now, they first concentrate on the corners of the outer walls. Okay, so they moved out 50 mil then. So the first two courses were level and then they've, they've moved out their third course 50 mil. I wonder, I wonder, so I wonder if the first two layers are here, then this one comes out. I wonder if they're going to backfill the soil to the, to the two foundation courses. Maybe that's why they're doing that. But I really like the fact that those other, the inner bricks are just locked in. Okay, so you don't have to, to do too much with them. They have saved so much time in Australia. But like different types of bricks, of course, but maybe they have these in Australia too. I'm not too sure. But yeah, uh, okay, so what they're doing now is they're just going to build up the corners. So this is probably the biggest part of brick laying. Make sure that your, court, your corners are square, put them all up, and then the next day they come along, they just run the string lines and they can really fill everything in really quickly. There's no way that they're going to fill back fill up to that second course. I can see the level up next door, and they're not going to fill up to that. So maybe that's just a okay. But no, they've they've changed the way they're laying the bricks. Okay, so instead of running that way, now they're running this way. That's interesting. So this might be just a feature. This might just be a part of the style. So they've changed the way that they're laying the bricks. 
Yeah, should look good. If they render this, that'll look fantastic. Forming the corners has the advantage that you can easily lay. Okay, so for the first day of, of block laying, I would say that they've done a lot of work. It doesn't look like they've done much there, but that those first two courses, they spent a lot of time on them, making sure that they're all perfectly square and that membrane, which is probably the most important thing to stop that rising damp coming up through, through the walls. But yeah, now that they've got these all the corner blocks in, you know, it's day two, they should fill. They'll, they'll be up to the first floor. Lay out the plumb lines for the next rows of tiles. The first working day is done. Good morning, they continue with the outer walls. The bricklayers place row after row. The windows and lintels are installed, and around noon the bricklayers arrived at the last row on the ground floor. Finally, the pink styrofoam formwork is laid for the concrete ceiling. The formwork also serves as insulation and remains on the building after finishing the ceiling. At the end of the second working day, the outer walls of the ground floor are ready. Day three. Today the interior walls are created. Uh, I'll, I'll see what they do here. Here too, a bitumen membrane is placed under the walls to protect against rising damp. The stones are so-called vertical perforated bricks in two different versions. For comparison, here both on top of each other. So those inner walls are not load bearing. So the outer walls are load bearing and then not so they put another the second floor slab over the top. So these these inner ones are not load bearing. The brick with 17.5 centimeters <coughs> wall thickness for the load bearing walls and the narrower brick with 11.5 centimeters for the non-load bearing walls. The floor plan shows where which stone has to be used. The load-bearing walls run right through the house, between the living room, guest room, kitchen, and the utility room, and once along to the load-bearing living room wall, and the non-load-bearing walls run between the kitchen, living room, bathroom and the utility room. The walls are set up here just like the outer walls. Cement mortar under the first row, exact leveling of the first stones with laser, from the second row on, thin bed mortar, laser, spirit level, plumb line and constant checking ensure exact, straight walls. Finished. The inner walls are standing. Now the base gets a diffusion open seal before the cladding is coming. Alright, so the biggest thing I can see here, is there's no electrics and there's no water in the walls. All right, I haven't seen them put any pipes in, I haven't seen them put any wires in, I haven't seen any of that. So that it's going to be interesting how they do that because why wouldn't you have all that in the wall now? That would save a hell of a lot of work if you're, if you're laying the bricks and having all your electrics and your water put into the wall straight away. But anyway, we'll see what they do. Day 4. The scaffolding comes. The base is clad and the masons set up pillars throughout the house to support the ceiling elements. The next morning, exactly at 8 a.m. So just looking at this, okay, so in Australia, we don't have these kind of bricks, but we have something similar to that. They're called Besser bricks, which is just a hollow block. Okay, it's a big brick, three, 320 or 320 by 180, something like that. So a good brick layer in Australia can lay 300 a day. Now, I can. there's only a couple of guys here, so to be at that stage in two days, it's pretty good laying, uh, pretty good going. 
and particularly with all the amount of work that they did on the foundation courses. So yeah, you know, a good team of three or four good bricklayers should be able to do a floor, you know, in two days. The crane stands for the ceiling elements. The ceiling elements, so-called semi-finished part ceilings are approximately 6 cm thick reinforced concrete slabs in which part of the necessary reinforcement has already been inserted. They can be laid quickly and flexibly, depending on the size, but then still need to be concreted. For this, the masons insert additional reinforcement bars. Firstly, to optimally connect and consolidate the ceiling with the masonry. Secondly, to join the end. Okay, so this is basically just another slab on top, but it's interesting that they got that pink insulation and it stays in in the slab. So obviously they're rendering the outside of the house or they're going to cloud it in some sort of way. But yeah, I like that idea. You just pick them up by a crane, stick them on top. So yeah, there is a bit of form work underneath, but not like in Australia, they'd actually have like plywood um, form, form work to take the shape of the concrete. But yeah, exactly the same process again. Individual ceiling elements together. But again, I still haven't seen any electrics. There's no electrics coming up through, the, through this. There's no water. That's, that's surprising me at the moment. There. This creates a stable, closed concrete ceiling after concreting. Only the access to the stairs remains free and has to be boarded accordingly. Another thing I've noticed is that none of these guys have got nail bags. No, they don't even have like a, a nail bag for the hammer, which is surprising, you know. Like um, steel fixers, everyone has their own special type of bag that they use, got all their tools on them, carry it around with you. You know, no, one, no one's got a nail bag on, which is surprising. Once all the reinforcement bars have been laid, everything is connected with wire so that nothing moves during concrete pouring. The ceiling openings for the supply lines, water, heating, electricity which comes to the upper floor also remain free. They get polystyrene covers before concreting. Okay, so there you go. So they're leaving, leaving a gap for water, electricity and your plumbing. Finished. The concrete for the ceiling can come. A total of approximately 12 cubic meters of concrete flow into the formwork for the approximately 10 by 10 meters ceiling slab. It is important to evenly distribute and prevent air pockets. Therefore, constantly push the concrete back and forth. Okay, so we've seen this process before, so let's move ahead a bit. Now the concrete is compacted with a surface vibrator. The surface vibrator directs high frequency vibrations into the concrete. This increase. I'd love to know what that pink stuff is. It looks like foam to me. So anyone who's a concreter in Germany, can you tell me what that is? Because if it's just foam, what's holding it there? Like I see that they've got some sort of construction foam like glue in between, but what's, what's stopping that from breaking out? Increases the flowability of the fresh concrete, air pockets rise to the surface and can escape. This gives the concrete its perfect, dense, harden. A few days later, the bricklayers start with the upper floor. The construction is the same as on the ground floor. God, I can't get over how thick those walls are. At 350 mil thick, that must be an amazing insul insulator. And that pink stuff is, they just go straight over the top of the pink stuff. Mm. I didn't see, did they put another membrane on that? 
The outer walls are created again with the thermal brick made of Poritan stone with hydrophobized mineral wool. First the corners are created again, then the entire outer walls. However, there are no longer any load-bearing walls inside. All partitions for the master bedroom, dressing room, bathroom, children's room and corridor are built with the narrower, vertically perforated brick with a wall thickness of 11.5 centimeters. Okay, so if there's no load-bearing um, walls there, that means they're not going up to a third floor. So the truss is full of the for the roof will just go on to the outer walls and they're the low bearing walls. So yeah, this this um, this story should be pretty quick, particularly internal walls. Again, I still can't see any water and I still can't see any electrics in the walls. But I can see what they're doing on top already. Okay, so they look like they've got um, like a locking system, like a lock key. Um, so a bit like the footing in the in the slab in, in the ground in Australia. They're doing this on top of the roof and that will hold it all square but you know this is a pretty basic house this is just a square house there's not there's not too much to this it's just two blocks on top of each other after four days the upper floor is also up as a conclusion only the anchor ring plate is missing for this, the bricklayers have already put a formwork on the top row of bricks into which reinforcement bars are now being laid. The anchor ring, as the name suggests, runs like a ring around the entire top edge of masonry. This reinforced concrete construction gives the wall stability. The anchor ring plate is used to absorb and transfer horizontal tensile forces such as wind, ground vibrations and the roof load itself. If the concrete is filled, it must be compacted again with the surface vibrator. The masonry work is now complete. The walls of the house stand. Construction time for the two floors, 10 days. Ten days seems long, but again, I don't know what the, what the crew size is. It looked like there was only three or four guys there, but that seemed a little bit long, <coughs> particularly for only two stories. But anyway, so let's have a look at an Australian house. So we'll look at the really big difference straight away. So this house is not a masonry house. It does have bricks, but they're not, it's not load bearing. So in Australia, we have wood frames or steel frames, not in every state, but in most states, this is how we build a house. So I used to do, um, we used to have a team of five guys and we could frame up two houses in a day. Um, but we would only do the frame, we wouldn't do the roof, we wouldn't do the trusses, we just put up all the walls, move on to the next house and do that. So basically what happens is that everything's already made for you. So this all comes on the back of a truck, everything is marked, already measured, all the noggins are in, everything's ready to go. Okay, it just comes straight from the factory, a bit wonky. Now you'll see on the ground, on the slab, about two hours or an hour before um, the frame has arrived, the builder will send someone out and they'll actually mark on the, on the slab where everything needs to go. Okay, make sure everything is square. So as a framer, all you do is just show up, get the correct frame, put it in place, follow the line, whack it into the cement, put it all together, make sure everything's square, and that's done. So all of these frame pieces have already got the windows set, they've got doors already cut out of them, everything is already done, everything is perfectly square, all good stuff. Um, the wood itself is all termite proof as well, it's all been treated. So um, Australia doesn't have a problem with rising damp, we have a problem with insects, so this is all being treated. You can also get a steel framed house, uh, exactly the same process, exactly, it looks exactly the same, it's just made out of, of um, 
channel and stud but, and it's just crimped together and kind of nailed together but yeah so this can this can all happen in a couple of hours so this is probably the biggest difference we've noticed so far but we'll just go quickly through this show you a couple of things so you can see this one's already got a window cut out of it so that will just be put in place and like I said you can see all, all carpenters in Australia we have nail bags on us so we wear all our tools with us so that when we're holding something something up or we need something we've already got it on us okay so the only thing that they're, they're using there is a is a nail gun okay they've got a compressor one most carpenters don't have that anymore we have battery ones and you just go ch -ch 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 -ch, click it back on your nail bag fit something in place click 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 click, click. Um, there will be a navi on site okay so we've got about five six guys here there will be a navi who sits at a saw okay so sometimes if there's a problem or you need to cut something or you need another noggin put into the wall you just yell out to the navi whatever the size is 350 noggin he'll cut it and throw it over to you and then you can put it into into place but like you can see on the ground everything's marked and you know when you've got a good team together you can really knock up a frame of a house in no time at all like a couple of hours so let's just move on quickly all right so you can see like you can tell by the day it's still it's still morning it's about 11 o'clock in the morning so these guys have been going for about four hours everything's squared up they use bracing to keep make sure that the everything's squared okay um, you wouldn't don't worry too much about the rain rain only really affects the concrete at, in Australia all this uh, wood is all the pine is waterproof you don't really want it to get wet like over a period of long time but if it just rains for a day no one no one would really worry about that so now they're just bracing everything up make sure that everything stays square they also use big square um, um, plywood on the corners just to keep everything square but yeah that's all they're doing at the moment the reason <coughs> excuse me the reason why they're bracing everything the way that they are because the trusses will go on top and there's there's a, uh, a pressure on the out outside to push the frame out when you put the truss trusses on so they're just making sure that everything is squared up and all of these these braces will be taken off once it's done all right let's keep going have a little look all right um, here so you'll see this so these are the plans that we have so everybody gets one of these it doesn't matter whether you're an electrician a plumber or a roofer a fascia and gutterer it doesn't matter even the landscaper gets one so that has every single plan, including electrics, plumbing, uh, roofing, and the whole lot. So you can look at the plan and you can go further on and go, all right, well, the electrician needs something here or he needs something there. So you can actually start helping each other before the, the plumber or the electrician's even there. So yeah, every, every building site has uh, detailed plans. All right. This is Okay, so they're putting on the stirrups now to take some joists or outriggers. That looks like an outrigger. Okay, so these these are just all gang nail things. So that will take a joist that goes out. Looks like the front door there, but this looks like a single single story because I haven't seen any floor joists go in there. So what's he using there? Screws or tacks? Alright, so we're getting, what, about midday now, the sun's out, so that rain's gone away. Let's go on a bit further, here's the trusses have arrived. So again, they all arrive on the back of a truck, they're already made, they've got the gang nails in them, they're all pressed in at 20,000 ton or something, you can never get a gang nail out even if you tried. And so all the trusses have arrived, they're already made to size. You can see all the different valleys and, and, and ridges, they're already made. So 
but this is a really quick process. You normally have one guy stand in the middle and one guy or two guys on either side of the truss. They'll get the center one up and then they'll just go bang, 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 bang on the other side. Put the purlins on and put the battens on. Done, ready for the roof. So yeah, with a good, a really good team, uh, you could set up a full house in a day. Let's see here if we get to the end. Okay, so yeah, this so this is ready for the roofers. Um, so they haven't got the haven't got the roof battens across yet. Now, um, one interesting thing you'll see now some houses here. Okay, I can't see exactly here, but a lot of the times the inner walls are not load supporting. The outside walls are, and the truss supports the whole weight over the top. So I think you can see there there's a gap. There's a gap between the, the truss and the actual inner wall. Okay, they will put a little uh, clip on there with a movement, like a uh, um, slide, slide hole in it. So with any weight from the tiles or whatever they're going to put on the roof. Plus with heat in Australia, you get expansion. So the, the top of the, of the inner wall will be about 50 mil away from the truss with a little slide clip on there as well. So they actually don't touch the inside walls, they span the whole frame. Okay, so from, what did we say, two weeks in Germany, of admittedly they're doing it in a block, to one day in Australia. So anyway, thanks for watching. Like I said, if you guys, um, have any comments if you're um, a builder in Germany I'd love to um, hear what you think about the way that we build houses and also um, about why you do the certain things you do when you're building in Germany so that's part two I'll do part three and hopefully I'll see you again please like and subscribe